too. I was just washing dishes. Mm, you can see my hands. And you could see uh, that something clicked in my brain once I thought this. Uh, everything that you do is... Everything has some sort of input and then output. You know, they they say dharma and they try to put like all types of spiritual connotations behind it. But what I'm saying is not about that. It's literally just factual. And it, and it's it seems enlightened, but I feel like you don't have to perceive it that way. You should just remember this. Like when you want a goal to get done, there's a process that you have to go through to get it done. And so let's go back to washing dishes. I hate washing dishes. I literally hate washing dishes my entire life. Uh, if I had a job as a dishwasher, I wouldn't last two weeks. I would literally fucking off myself. But yeah. So when you wash dishes, if you are washing them at home, it's because you cooked something. So you wanted some good food. You wanted some real good food. You whipped it up. It was delicious, and you sat there and enjoyed the most amazing food. It was so decadent, and and you're you busted a gut. You're sitting there, but then you realize, oh, the kitchen's a mess. I have to wash all these dishes, and so that's the analogy. You can now infer what I'm trying to say. In order to get that greatness, that good food that you wanted, you had to go through. The the stupid <laughs> the stupid dishwashing. Every time that you get something great, there was some some grueling work behind it. Even even when you just think about the process of moving around, like you're in order to move, you're burning calories. They say there's a ten percent rule, or like in order to create energy, you're expending energy. There's a there's this process, and it's just constantly. I used the dishwashing aspect to help you understand what reciprocity is. It's about the exchange between two things. Uh, I think that reciprocity has to be of equivalent value, but just now you now that you can conceptualize an interpersonal relationship, you you can now perceive that within yourself and take it a step further. It's weird. I don't know, I just thought it was pretty profound because they always talk about dharma and karma. But once you actually start to think about it, it's it's real. It's not about, oh, yogi, spiritual, oh, zen breathing, fire breathing, chakra. It's not about all that, like, spiritual ghost fucking... You guys want to put some type of pseudoscience or metaphysical ontological perception behind it and it's just not that there's a real basis that some of this is derived from especially when it comes to things like um witchcraft a lot of males these days are not open to hearing what females have to say but once they start explaining it becomes so bright for example i asked this girl that i know we were talking about her her rituals and spirituality. And she told me that she did a riddance ritual. And I was like, oh, what is that about? And, you know, there's different values that these materials have in witchcraft. And they're actually pretty based. Like salt, you can create a barrier. And, you know, things don't want to cross the salt line. And there's a lot of things in nature that just do not like salt or are repelled away by salt. Or riddance, pepper. You know, when you want to get rid of evil spirits, you got pepper. And that's that's such a great, like, draw. Like, if you draw that up from nature, you understand that plants create things like extreme spiciness or extreme bitterness and sourness as a defense. If they can't have thorns or if they can't, have um, a symbiotic relationship with an insect that lives on them, then they'll just taste horrible. You know, if they can't have poison, then um, it's just strange that people want to make these types of things bigger than they are.
delicious. Why do you heck? What do you guys think? Am I crazy now? Am I a kook? Should I lay off on on the the psychedelic rituals with the shamans in the Amazon?